All right, let's start with a cylinder. I will add this one in, then I will hit N and B. I will immediately remove these height segments. 16 is just perfect. I will make this cylinder editable, then I will go into edge mode, right click, and I will grab loop cut tool, and I will drop this one right here. Now I will double click on that edge loop, then scale that out. Once I have done that, I will grab this tool again and drop this one right in the middle. I will increase up the cuts to two because I want a uniform mesh. Uh, sorry, let me do that again because I will enable another option of this tool. Add this one in, increase this up to two, then most importantly, enable this option, preserve curvature tool, which will basically bulge out these new segments. This will give us a nice curved surface. Okay, let's get back to this tool, loop cut tool. I will add this one again by holding shift. This time though, I will turn this option off. I will increase this up until I have a uniform mesh. Basically, these polygons should be the same in size more or less. Now let's take a look at how we can add that detail in. Before jumping into that part, I want to duplicate my mesh because right now it's quite rough. So basically I can use this mesh to project on. I just need to subdivide it. So I will drop this one into a sub D and select these edges real quick and weight them. Then I will just make the sub D editable. Now this one is ready to be used for projection. I will call this projection and hide it. Now let's get back to this one. First, let me show you the wrong way to add that detail in. I will select this four by four polygons, then make an inset and apply this fit circle tool. I will also enable this option, which will reproject these newly formed polygons onto the surface. Everything is looking great, but these diagonal edges will create artifacts on the surface. Remember, we are working on a curved surface. It is quite fragile. So you should not have these diagonal edges on the surface. Your flow should be as straight as possible, just like these edges, these vertical and horizontal edges. Anything against that flow will break the smoothness of the surface just like these diagonal edges. So we need to find a way to get rid of them. I know a perfect solution. I will just hit Ctrl Z. All I need to do is shrink down my selection one time. We select shrink selection. These four polygons will be more than enough to create that perfect circle. Right click, fit circle tool, and here we go. No diagonal edges, and we have a perfect circle. Uh, sorry, this is another thing that I want to point out. That tool, I don't know why, but cannot create perfect circles. If you look at the outline of the selection, this is not a perfect circle. And I don't know the reason. Maybe it is because the surface is curved. I don't know why. So to do that properly, we will need a help from these pool objects. I will drop this one into that pool, then I will add in a new cylinder, change the orientation. I will remove these height segments as these do nothing to the shape. Then I will adjust the rotation segments. I will basically set them to eight. The reason is I have four polygons, which means that it has eight points, AKA eight segments. Next up, I will move it up, scale it in maybe, I don't know, I will just roughly position that cylinder. Okay, by the way, it should be in a four by four polygon selection to keep things even. Okay, that seems fine. Now, let me move it on the Z and drop this one under the cylinder. Perfect, I will simply make this bullet editable and get rid of the second one. Now I need to correct the topology. So I will grab polygon pen tool. It is going to be quite easy as my target points are going to be the points of the cylinder I just added. So I will merge these ones like that. I 
I don't need to do that on the other side as I can delete these points and drop one into a symmetry. Let's enable weld and make it editable. Although we got rid of these diagonal edges, there is going to be tension on these points. As I said, these points are against the perfect straight flow. So around these points and these ones, there might be some artifacts. So to make it perfect, I will subdivide this mesh one time. Before doing that though, let me delete these ones. And then maybe I can move these apart. Yeah, now I will just select them all, right click, open up the subdivide options and enable smooth subdivision. One level will be more than enough and click on OK. Perfect. Now I will have more geometry around the detail, which will make it easier for this mesh to be projected on this projection mesh. Now let me hold on shift and in this shrink wrap the former and put this one in the target object tab. There is going to be a slight change, not too much. But yeah, this is going to be the solution. Now our surface will be 100%, maybe not 100%, but 95% artifact free. Now we can apply smoothing deformer after the shrink wrap deformer, sorry, before the shrink wrap deformer. I mean, yeah, I don't think we need that. So I will just delete it and apply this deformer, right click, connect objects and delete. Now I will just hold that control, extrude that out, hit T, scale it on the Z and hold on shift, stop at zero. Then I will hit T, scale this in, hit T again, move this in. Now let's cap off this close polygonal tool. I will select this patch one and rotate it around to align it with the world. Same here. Next up, let's drop this one into a sub D. I will select the edges that I want to sharpen, like these ones. Then I will bevel them in solid mode. Hit Q. Nice. Then what about here? I will simply select these edges with loop selection tool. Slide tool, hold on control and clone this like that. Hit Q. Looks nice. I can use the slide tool again on these edges. And here we go, looking perfect. If you orbit around the mesh, you will see no artifacts, which is exactly what we want. Looking like a butter. It feels like there is a black hole right in the middle of the detail and that black hole is bending the space time. In our case, it is bending the topology. This is type of the topology that we need to have smooth surfaces. As you can see, the flow is quite straight, which will eliminate all possible artifacts around the detail. Now let's move on. I will drop this one in as well because I want to get for mesh, then that one maybe. Next up, we can select these edges. I will scale them on the Y to flatten out them. Then I will bevel them with two subdivisions. Then I will select these ones in the middle and scale them in. Oh, sorry, I will extrude them in two times and delete them. Hit Q. Nice. Next up, let's work on the insides. I will make a loop selection, split them out. Hit T. One more time, move these in, hold on control, extrude this, then our sporting edges, hit Q. I need to group them, alt ng, nice. Next up, another loop selection, split them out, UNP, move these in, hold on control, 
extrude them in. Then I will drop in that loop. Set this to three. Then select these new ridges. Bevel them in solid mode. Then I will drop in these new ridges right in the middle of these bevels. Then select them. I will move them on the Z. This is going to give us a nice look. We can also move these out as well, whatever you like. This object just needs these parting edges. Okay, and finally we will need an object in the middle. I'm trying to remember what I did here. I suppose it was a sapphire in hexahedron. And then B. I will set this to something like 8. Then make it visible, make a loop selection, field selection, delete, extrude these, then scale the objects. Put it in the same subdue group. Okay, finally, here I'm going to. Dissolve this out first because I don't think these edges are straight. Yeah, so I will just dissolve them out. Double click on that perfect edge. Look, these are these edges are perfectly flat on the Y. I will grab slide tool, hold down control, and slide these down. Now these edges will be perfectly straight. Then I will make a loop selection, split them out, hide them, go back to the original one, and delete these polygons or before deleting them, I can extrude them in, then delete. I will drop in those loops. Nice. Now let's solo this object. I will scale, uh, sorry, extrude these edges in. Then, like what I did on the other part, I will drop in these loops. Turn off solo mode, hit Q. And here we go. By the way, before finishing off your projects, always check your normals. I always forget to mention it. So basically, select the mesh, hit Ctrl A, and look at the colors. For example, I need to flip these, right click, reverse normals. Okay, everything is looking perfect. I can delete that projection object. And that's going to be it. Long story short, just try to keep your objects as uniform as possible and try to keep your flow as straight as possible. This will eliminate all possible artifacts, especially on curved surfaces. Hope you find this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, just let me know. You can also join the Discord channel. You can find the link in the description down below. Thank you very much for being here and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.